Hello, Agnes. Morocco has been building an air defense base for some time now. Tell us a little bit about that base that it's building. Satellite images show that Morocco is building and was building an air defense base at Sidi Yahya Al Gharb, which is 60 kilometers to the northeast of its capital, Rabat. Uh, speaking with the satellite imagery experts as well as local Moroccan experts, we could uh, validate that this is an air defense base which, uh, which, had, uh, which has been constructed since 2017 and the construction was completed in August 2020. Has the government of Morocco released why exactly it's building this base? This is the first air defense base in Morocco. Of course, there are threats speaking about UAVs and other fighter jets in the airspace. However, it will include a number of air defense systems to secure the airspace. What kind of systems are in that airbase itself? Morocco has been signing contracts and procuring a number of air defense uh, systems, speaking on top of which is the uh, 24 Sky Dragon 50 uh, air defense systems it has uh, received from China in uh, 2017. Also, it signed a contract for, in 2019 uh, for VL Mika with France, which is a $226 million uh, worth deal. And uh, it is working on procuring other air defense systems. Reports claim that um, Morocco has signed a contract to procure FD2000, which is the uh, medium to long range Chinese air defense system. However, Defense News could, uh, could make sure from the uh, local experts that the contract was not signed. However, it's still negotiating to procure other systems on top of which is the Israeli Barak 8. And the experts expect this to be announced uh, in 2022. And that's a lot of different systems from a lot of different countries. How are they, how are they managing all those different, uh, different air defense systems? True. Uh, usually when you have a Western and Eastern uh, systems, uh, systems from different origins, some of them are Western, others are Eastern, it is hard to merge them together. However, the Moroccan armed forces have uh, designed the uh, COBRA, which is a command and control system to merge all the data coming from the different air defense systems to analyze them and accordingly to take uh, action. Well, Agnes, thank you for covering this and thank you for joining us. The Air Force and Boeing are still working on the remote vision system for the KC-46A Pegasus. The RVS, as it's called, is a network of cameras and sensors on the KC-46 boom that operators use to refuel other aircraft. In April, the Air Force and Boeing decided to replace the original RVS with a redesigned version that is expected to be fielded in 2023. The aircraft has seen several issues, but this is most prominent and it's labeled a Category 1 deficiency. The vision system has issues with certain lighting conditions, which increases the risk of a boom scraping a receiving aircraft. But it's not all bad news for the Pegasus. The Air Force Air Mobility Command commander recently authorized it to refuel more aircraft. The Air Force also received the 50th aircraft for its fleet, and Boeing delivered one to Japan in October. The White House has announced $308 million in additional humanitarian assistance for Afghanistan, offering new aid to the country as it edges toward a humanitarian crisis since the Taliban takeover nearly five months ago. White House spokesperson Emily Horn said in a statement Tuesday that new aid from the U.S. Agency for International Development will flow through independent humanitarian organizations and will be used to provide shelter, health care, winterization assistance, emergency food aid, water, sanitation, and hygiene services. The country's long troubled economy has been in a tailspin, in a tailspin rather, since the Taliban takeover, and nearly 80% of Afghanistan's previous government's budget came from the international community. That money, now cut off, financed hospitals, schools, factories, and government ministries. Desperation for such basic necessities has been further exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as healthcare shortages, drought, and malnutrition. And around the world, Ukrainian reservists are stepping up their training to counter possible aggression from its neighbor. Russia has been building up troops and equipment on its border with Ukraine. Alisa Pankovska is a career cyber trainer and a reservist. I never wanted to be an object of um, male protection. That's why I came here to Territory Defense Forces to have skills to 
uh, use the gun to defend myself, to defend my family from possible Russian aggr aggression. She hopes her training is a deterrent. If the enemy knew that everybody in the country, or let's say many people in the country, have the skills to use rifles and to defend their home, there will be no uh, situation like in Crimea 2014 or like in Donetsk and Lugansk. Dmitry Kostikevich is also a Ukrainian reservist who has been training for years. In 2013, for example, when uh, war was starting, I cannot do nothing. I do not know how to shoot. I do not know what equipment I need. I don't have this equipment. I do not know how to deal with medicine, uh, with uh, uh, engineering, and so on and so forth. Now I think I'm kind of ready to this, but of course not as ready as I want to be. Ukraine's security is of interest to several countries, but it's not yet enjoying the official and added protections of being a NATO member country. Everybody in Ukraine clearly understands that NATO right now, they are in fact uh, kind of afraid of Russia. and They are not ready to give us full membership uh, right now. So it's just a long uh, way that uh, we have to go.